Hello everyone, this is section 1.6, exact equations. And in order to be able to handle exact equations, um, we have to review some tools, in particular partial derivatives and multiple integration. So recall partial derivatives, if we're given a function of two variables, x and y, um, we use the notation, this is not a, the, the delta symbol, so the partial of the function f with respect to x um, that is found by treating y as a constant. And if we want the partial of the function with respect to y, we're going to treat x as a constant. So here's a few examples, and we want to find the two partials. So the partial of f with respect to x would be, okay, so Basically, y is being held as a constant, so in the first term, this y cubed is really just going to tag along in the differentiation process. So it's almost like I'm covering it up, and we're just considering in that first term differentiating 2x squared to get 4x, and then the y cubed just tags along. So that term would be 4xy cubed. And similarly, in the second term, the y to the fifth, since y is being treated as, treated as a constant, that's going to tag along as a constant multiple, and we're just differentiating this minus x cubed, and its derivative is minus 3x squared, so therefore we'd have minus 3x squared, and again the y to the fifth just tags along. So that's the partial with respect to f, or x, excuse me. Now when we take it with respect to y, then we're going to hold x constant. Um, if you want to do the little cover-up method, that's fine. Um, but here we're going to be differentiating the y cubed. And we get 3y squared, so times the 2 would be 6y squared. But then we have the x squared tagging along. So 6x squared, y squared. And then similarly here, this minus x cubed is the constant multiple. And the derivative of y to the fifth is 5y to the fourth. So we'd have minus 5, and let's write x cubed, y to the fourth. Um, in this second example, for the partial of f with respect to x, again, y is going to be held as a constant. Now here's the formula for e to the u. So the derivative of e to the u is e to the u. So we're going to recopy e to the, that's a uh, 3x squared y to the fourth. So we just recopy e to the 3x squared y to the fourth. But then the derivative of e to the u again is e to the u times the derivative of the power. So now we're taking the derivative of the power, but we're holding, since we're differentiating with respect to x, we're holding y as a constant. So we're differentiating 3x squared to get 6x, and the y to the fourth takes them on. And so then we'll bring the 6xy to the fourth out in front of the e to the 3x squared y to the fourth. So then similarly for the partial of f with respect to y, again the formula for e to the u, so just recopy e to the 3x squared y to the fourth. But now since we're taking the partial with respect to y, x is held as a constant, so the x squared tags along and the derivative of 3y to the fourth is 12y cubed. So we'll write 12, and then the x squared's tagging along, y cubed. So then we'll just bring that out in front of the exponential factor. Okay, so that's partial derivatives. And then for multiple integrals, um, basically we just work from the inside out. And... The first integral in this example 
is going to be with respect to x. So if you wanted to highlight the inside integral. So now if we're integrating with respect to x, y is held as a constant. So I'm going to recopy the integral from 0 to 3. We integrate 2x as normal with respect to x and we get x, 2x squared over 2 or just simply x squared. Now since y is a constant, the derivative of 3y would just be 3y times x um, because when we integrate a constant, we pick up the variable of integration. So 3yx or 3xy. And that's evaluated here. You could say, if you wanted to, you could say as x ranges from 1 to 2. And then after we're done evaluating that, we're going to need to integrate with respect to y. So now by the fundamental theorem of calculus, okay, we've got the integral from 0 to 3. And then upper limit goes in, so a 2 goes in for x. We get 2 squared plus 3 times 2 times y. And then minus the lower limit goes in, so 1 goes in for x. So 1 squared plus 3 times 1 times y. And that's going to be integrated with respect to y. So we'll crunch things down here. We'll get the integral from 0 to 3 of, let me leave brackets, there would be 4 minus 1 is 3. And then we'd have plus, this is 6y minus 3y, so 3 plus 3y. And that is with respect to y. And now we can integrate that as normal, We're just integrating with respect to y. So the integral of 3 would be 3y. The integral of 3y is 3y squared over 2, or all right, 3 halves y squared. And that's evaluated from 0 to 3. And you could say y equals 0 to y equals 3 if you like. And now fundamental theorem of calculus, upper limit goes in. So 3 times 3 plus 3 halves times 3 squared minus lower limit goes in. Well, we're just plugging in a 0 for y. No need to really show the substitution because y is a factor of each term. So that's just going to be a big 0. And so we get 9 plus, this be 27 halves. And that's 18 halves plus 27 halves is 45 halves. Okay, so we need to be able to handle those concepts. And then here's the theorem regarding exact equations. Um, we have the preconditions here of uppercase M, N, the partial of M with respect to Y, and the partial of N with respect to X have to all be continuous functions of X and Y. Pretty much assume that's true. You don't really need to check anything there. Here's the standard form for an exact equation. And we say it's exact if the partial of m with respect to y is equal to the partial of n with respect to x. So we first have to verify that it is an exact equation. And then this means that there are there is a function f of x y such that and this basically comes from the definition of differentials um, the fact that the derivative the partial of the function we're looking for with respect to x has to equal m and the partial of the function that we're looking for with respect to y has to equal n. So those are two major conditions that we're going to impose. And oftentimes through the solution, although we have a cookbook recipe here, 
the two main things that I'm going to state to get to our solution, I'll call uppercase or Roman letter numeral one, partial of f with respect to x has to equal m, and then the second thing is that the partial of f with respect to y has to equal n. So what's going to happen is after we verify it's exact, so here's the procedure, we're going to impose that first condition and then we're going to integrate to find the function f of x, y. But when we integrate, we have to introduce a constant. We'll be integrating with respect to x because that's the condition we're imposing. And when we integrate, we have to include a constant of integration. But because this is a function of two variables, that constant needs to be a function of y. I mean, it could just be a number, but worst case, it could be a function of y, because it would be considered a constant if we're integrating with respect to x. So that's very important to know. And then we're just going to take the derivative, so ultimately we want to impose the second condition. So we'll take the partial now of this function f of x, y with respect to y and then impose that second condition. And at that point we'll be able to solve for g prime because if we take the derivative of this f of x, y, the g of y becomes g prime of y. We'll be able to, we'll be able to solve for it and then integrate it with respect to y to find it and back substitute to find the function we're looking for. And then we always say to form the general implicit solution. So, although we have the little cookbook recipe, the method actually kind of flows rather neatly just with those two major conditions that we outlined there um, being imposed. So, the first thing is the verification. All right, um, this is taking the form of mdx plus ndy equaling zero. So that's our standard form for the exact equation. So off to the side here, let me verify that they're exact. So we calculate the partial of m with respect to y. And m is 4x minus y. If we're taking the derivative with respect to y, x is held as a constant. So the derivative of 4x would be 0. And the derivative of negative y is negative 1. And then we calculate the partial of n with respect to x. So now we're taking the derivative of 6y minus x with respect to x, so holding y is a constant. The derivative of 6y is 0, and the derivative of negative x would be negative 1. So I'll just put a little check mark there saying that we have verified that they are exact. All right, so now the first major condition, once again, I always like to label these. This one is Roman numeral 1. We're going to impose the fact that the partial of m, well, excuse me, we're going to assume that there's a function f of x, y, such that the partial of the function f um, with respect to x is equal to m. So therefore we could state that the partial of f with respect to x is equal to m is the 4x minus y. Now we want to find f of x, y, so we're going to integrate. And you could throw the integral symbol and the differential dx in front of each side, but let's just do this mentally. 
understanding that we're integrating with respect to x. So we find f of x, y by integrating with respect to x. So therefore, y is held as a constant. When we integrate 4x, we get 4x squared over 2, or 2x squared. If y is a constant, integrating negative y, we get the negative yx, or negative xy. We just pick up the variable of integration. When we integrate a constant, and then we introduce a constant of integration, but the constant of integration is worst case a function of y so we always when we integrate the constant is g of y when we integrate the first time so now the second major thing to impose is that the partial of this function with respect to y has to equal n so first we're going to find the partial of this function now with respect to y. So now we're taking derivatives with respect to y. So that means x is a constant. Well, the derivative of 2x squared would be 0. Derivative of minus xy with respect to y would just be minus x because the minus x is a constant. But then the derivative of g of y, in general, with respect to y, would be g prime of y. And now we can impose the second major condition. And that is that the partial of f with respect to y has to equal n. So now we could say that this, what we found, what we had just found, the negative x plus g prime of y is equal to n, which was 6y minus x. And note here how the x's vanish. And we have that g prime of y is equal to 6y. And now we can integrate to find g of y. And g of y would be integrating 6y. We get 6y with respect to y. We get 6y squared over 2, or 3y squared. And then we add our constant of integration. We're going to call this c sub 1. And then we're going to move up here. We're going to back substitute into f of x, y. So now we'll say that f of x, y is 2x squared minus x, y plus g of y, which is 3y squared plus c sub 1. And the general implicit solution then is always that we take the we just simply take the variable portion of our function f of x y so 2x squared minus x y plus 3y squared and we set it equal to in general some constant of integration that we call c and that's our general implicit solution okay so again these are the two major conditions um, the, the exactness will verify off to the side again. Um, remember this is MDX. Plus NDY. Equaling zero in our standard form. So to verify it's exact, we first calculate the partial of m with respect to y. So x is being held as a constant. 
derivative y squared 2y times the 2x would give us 4xy. And the derivative of 3x squared, if x is a constant, is 0. And then we calculate the partial of n with respect to x. And y is held as a constant. So the derivative of 2x squared is 4x to the first. y tags along, so 4xy. And then since y is a constant, the derivative of 4y cubed is 0. So those mixed partials, those partials are equal. And so we verified it's exact. Okay, now the process. I always like to say Roman numeral step 1 is to impose the condition that the partial of f with respect to x is equal to m. So we could state that the partial of f with respect to x is equal to m was 2x y squared plus 3x squared. So now we need to integrate to find f of x, y, and we're integrating with respect to x. So y is being held as a constant. Integrating 2x, we get 2x squared over 2, or x squared. So the first term, x squared, the y squared tags along. Integrating 3x squared with respect to x, we get 3x cubed over 3, or just x cubed. And we add the constant of integration, which again, we assume is a function of y, and we call it lowercase g of y. So then at that point, we're going to need to impose the second condition, that the partial of f with respect to y is equal to n. So this is the function f of x, y, and we're first going to take its partial with respect to y. So now x is being held as a constant. So the derivative of y squared is 2y. The x squared tags long, so 2x squared y. Derivative of x cubed, since x is a constant, its derivative is 0. And then we have plus the derivative of g of y in general with respect to y would be g prime of y. And now we impose the second condition, which is that the partial of f with respect to y, what we just found, has to equal n. So we set what we found, the partial of f with respect to y, which is 2x squared y plus g prime of y, equal to n. And n from our standard form is 2x squared y plus 4y cubed. And notice this always happens. If it doesn't, something's wrong. That is, what we get is always g prime of y. So notice how this 2x squared y vanishes what we always obtain at this point is g prime of y being equal to some function of y. And in this case, 4y cubed. So then we integrate to find g of y. And integrating with respect to y, we get 4y to the 4th over 4. We're just y to the 4th. We had a constant of integration, we call it c sub 1, and then we back substitute to get f of x, y, which was x squared, y squared, plus x cubed, plus g of y which we just found to be y to the fourth, plus what we're calling c sub 1. 
and then for our general solution our general implicit solution again we take the variable parts x squared y squared plus 6 cubed plus y to the fourth and set it equal to some constant of integration just call it c Alright, so um, in that first example, I forgot to note that this was the general solution. Okay, so we got one more example to practice, something a little bit more interesting, but you can see it's kind of fun the way these work out. And for a final example, like we had some things with logs and so first thing is to once again verify exactness recall the standard form mdx plus ndy is zero and to verify that they're exact we calculate the partial of m with respect to y so that means x is being held as a constant so the derivative of x cubed is zero and if x is a constant, this you can think of as 1 over x is actually a constant, and the derivative of y is 1, so then we just have 1 over x. And now we calculate the partial of n with respect to x. And so now y is being held as a constant. And the derivative of y squared would be 0, and the derivative of the natural log of x with respect to x is 1 over x. So those partials are equal, so it's verified. Okay, so once again, we start with the first major condition imposed. That the partial, there's some function such that, such that the partial of that function with respect to x is equal to m. So therefore the partial of the function we're looking for with respect to x is equal to we have x cubed plus y over x. Is m. So now we integrate to find with respect to x to find the function f of xy and integrating x cubed with respect to x we get x to the fourth over four or on the right one fourth x to the fourth integrating y over x y is really a constant because we're integrating with respect to x so let me just show this off to the side if we're integrating y over x with respect to x this y you can actually bring out of the integration because it's a constant multiple and integrating 1 over x we get the natural log of x so just to pull that off to the side so integrating y over x with respect to x we get y times the natural log of x Right, and then we introduce the constant, but remember the constant is the function of y, g of y. Alright, so then the next thing is to impose the condition that the partial of f with respect to y is equal to n. So we first calculate the partial of f with respect to y. 
which would be, okay, now we're taking the derivative with respect to y, so x is a constant, and the derivative of 1 fourth x to the fourth, well, that's a constant, so that's 0. Derivative of y is 1, natural log of x is a constant, so therefore, it's the natural log of x, and then plus the derivative of g of y, in general, g prime of y. And now we impose the second condition, that the partial of f with respect to y, what we just found, is equal to n, what's in the exact equation. So what we just found, natural log of x plus g prime of y is equal to n, so from the exact equation, y squared plus natural log x. And then, this always happens because it's exact. At this stage, we just get g prime of y. Notice our natural log of x cancels. And we get g prime of y to be a unique function of y alone. y squared in this case. All right, so then we integrate to get g of y. It would be y cubed over 3, or I'm going to write 1 third y cubed. Add a constant of integration, we'll call it c sub 1. And then we're going to back substitute to find f of x, y. And that was from here, 1 fourth x to the fourth, plus y natural log x. And then plus g of y, which is one-third y cubed plus c1. And now for the general implicit solution, we take the variable part, one-fourth x to the fourth plus y natural log x plus one-third y cubed and set it equal to um, some constant of integration. We'll just call it C. And you could actually clear the fractions here if you wanted to call this here, let's do it this way. I'll, I'll call this C2. That's an acceptable solution. You can just call it C. Um, but here you could actually clear the fractions now by multiplying everything by 12 and we'd get 3x to the 4th plus 12y natural log x plus 4y cubed equaling and then um, we'll just simply call that a new constant c. So that's a better looking answer because we cleared the fractions. Oops, sorry. Um, it drifted down there. So we'll give you a second to catch up, but that's pretty much it. Okay, so um, clearing the fractions just for the fun of it. Your choice. You don't need to. But that ends. Uh, exact equations in section 1.6. So we'll see you when you're ready for the next.